Good. Uh, thank you, Richard, for the introduction. Uh, great to be here and uh, welcome everyone this morning uh, to the speakers uh, and to the attendees and certainly to uh, the AIG team uh, that is uh, spattered amongst the crowd here. Thank you for, uh, for being here as well this morning. Um, I'm going to make an attempt uh, today at uh, making insurance sound as riveting as possible uh, in the morning. And I know that can be difficult at times, uh, so, uh, but I'm going to try my best uh, with, some, with some stories and some, and some pictures and illustrations as, as well. Um, I've walked a few miles uh, to get to Manila in my current role uh, here at AIG Philippines. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been a long one, I've, as Richard mentioned, I've been around Southeast Asia for, for quite some time. I was in Singapore, Malaysia, New Zealand, South Korea, the Philippines, uh, and Japan uh, before landing in the small town of, small college town of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, so uh, for those who don't know the states too well, Lancaster is well known as having one of the biggest Amish and Mennonite populations in the country. So you can only imagine the shock on my face when I got off the plane from, from Asia and, and to see horse and buggies rolling down the streets rather than tuk-tuks and, and jeepneys. Uh, so it was a, quite a, uh, a, a change for me and shock uh, to repatriate back to the U.S. after all those years in, in Asia. Um, you know, I went to a, a liberal arts school called Franklin and Marshall College. Uh, there was about 2,000 students who majored in international business and Japanese. Uh, I was, again, sticking with my, uh, my love for Asia, always uh, thinking and hoping that I would come back to this side of the world um, after uh, so much time over here. And I never really thought about being an insurance guy, uh, to be honest with you, and uh, who really does at that uh, time. It really wasn't the, uh, the sexiest uh, business, at least at that time, and I hope hopefully I can convince you otherwise today. Um, I originally had aspirations of uh, becoming a professional golfer, I couldn't believe it, uh, I, I thought I was decent at the time. Uh, I dabbled in side businesses, uh, the first being uh, working for a company called Matt Gray, uh, based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, which was one of the largest uh, manufacturers of washing machines and dryers. So as you can see, insurance and washing machines and dryers, I'm, I'm not on a very good path here at the moment, but. Uh, uh, again, this was, uh, this was what I was doing at the time. Um, all this before uh, landing on Wall Street as an enthusiastic uh, guy with, uh, with absolutely no insurance experience, actually, to begin with, but uh, in my mind, absolutely nothing to lose. Um, and uh, AIG seemed like a good fit for me at the time. Uh, it certainly offered uh, assignments overseas assignments for performing employees, which is what I was looking to do. Uh, it's about a 60,000 person company operating in 140 countries around uh, the globe. And the company definitely demanded sacrifice uh, in order to move up uh, the, uh, the ladder. Um, and uh, after, uh, I spent eight years in New York, um, kind of moving up the ranks. I started as a casualty underwriter, and for those who are not familiar with the insurance jargon, uh, it pretty much means uh, this, the start of the totem pole, uh, where you are the one um, pricing the risk, taking on the risk, and analyzing the, uh, the, the various companies uh, who need insurance placement. Uh, so uh, after eight years in New York, I had the chance to work in Asia. Um, and uh, I, I jumped, or I should say left, at the opportunity uh, to, uh, to work here in the Philippines. Um, uh, where the, the future is bright, and, and certainly uh, the opportunities are abundant if you are persistent, but not pushy, uh, if you are patient, but not plotting, and if you are passionate, and yet still practical. So uh, let's take a step back from here, and I'd like to share some of the elements of success uh, that I encountered along the road to the Philippines today. Um, and that's why I say the future is so bright, we all have to wear shades. Um, Richard set the stage for today and asked the speakers to provide some inspirational messages on how to succeed in an old man's world, or should I say, a wise man's world. Um, and I'd like to leave you today with a few nuggets uh, that can lead to greater success um, and, um, and, and some action 
I think that will increase uh, our value in the workplace. Um, and I'll be drawing a, a few personal lessons and experiences in order to help illustrate my points. And by the way, uh, notwithstanding the aging population uh, in some parts of the world, I believe that it may actually be uh, a better time than ever to succeed as a young person in an entrepreneurial, fast-paced, and tech-driven uh, world. So there's four brights of lights of success that I've encountered um, and, uh, and want to talk to you about. As you'll hear, some of them are not always so bright. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't want to sound like Debbie Downer, but uh, we've all had some of those days um, and maybe years when the lights of success uh, were not all that bright. But um, what I am still learning to keep the bright lights on is this. Uh, first, win or lose, you win. Uh, we all like to win, but how often uh, have you achieved more than expected, actually, by encountering a bump in the road or a, uh, a, a loss? Um, second, go global or go home. Now, I'm not telling you, you know, I'm not saying we need a whole mass exit from the Philippines, but uh, this is really about being educated citizens of, of the world um, and having um, certainly a cultural or international understanding uh, and awareness and a healthy respect for diversity. Um, this is probably timely for us all here in the room, given that we have ASEAN integration uh, right around uh, the corner. Uh, thirdly, is risky business. Uh, I'd say take risk head on. Uh, and uh, the easy road is, is usually not uh, the road to success all the time. Uh, take the road less traveled, I think, and you'll usually come on um, uh, you, you'll usually uh, do better off. And I think you'll hear from some of the other speakers here today about some of the sacrifices that they've made to come up with a, a winning product, a winning company, uh, or a winning website. So uh, I call that risk of business. Um, and finally, one of my favorites uh, for today, and that's fun is serious business. Um, have passion. And, and, and hey, have some, have some fun. Um, you know, the creativity and I think the enthusiasm uh, that fun can bring to success and to your team will make you um, a, a winner. Okay, so I, again, I, I know the cameras are rolling, so I, I might skip over some of these personal stories and pictures quite quickly, but as you can see, um, I'm a massive sports fanatic. Massive, and Chris Butt knows this because he used to be head on the baseball pitch all the time um, back when we were at IS. But, um, you know, I attack competitive sport much like uh, how I tackle my job at AIG. Um, and as I said, we need to turn our, our losses into wins. So. Um, and move forward with plenty of momentum. I don't think this is anything new. We've talked about competition and winning and losing uh, for, for quite some time, but I'm enamored by the fact that in some circumstances, our losses can actually end up becoming some of our um, best wins. Um, and there's also such a thing as winning poorly. Um, you know, if, if you watch uh, football, and I'm talking about American football, you've probably heard of the uh, the, 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 the ruling uh, over-celebration when players get a bit too overjoyous in the end zone um, and end up incurring a penalty for, for dancing or, or making lewd comments of the other uh, team. And I think this is not all that different from, from business uh, when we have successful contract wins or promotions and then spend a bit too much time celebrating and actually not enough time planning ahead from that. And I think sometimes we become a bit complacent uh, after a win. So, let me give you a personal example of uh, a win or a loss. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that I had, uh, had aspirations of becoming a professional golfer, and um, it was a lofty aspiration, I'll, I'll say that, but it was one that I thought was very attainable after, uh, after college, at least in my head. Um, so I packed my bags, and I headed down to, to Florida to earn a living from, from the game, which in Florida, for you know, was a mecca for uh, for professional golf, and um, frankly, I, I was struggling on the golf circuit, and um, realized very quickly that um, you know I, uh, I I wasn't as good as I thought I was, and um, frankly, living out of my car with the suitcases in the back, traveling around Florida, wasn't all that exciting. Uh, in the end, so um, I, uh, I I realized I had to make a change, and. Um, 
he was at that time I met uh, a guy by the name of Brad Yates who owned the IP Golf Academy at the time, uh, who, was, uh, who was in my mind a legend in the golf business, um, who took me in uh, to run a startup sports equipment company at the time. And I traveled all over the United States uh, selling golf equipment, if you can believe it, and I honed my skills in sales doing this. Um, it was a strictly a commission-based job, actually, one of the, the few that I've had. But um, you know, when you're working off only commission, uh, no sale equals no pay. So uh, you know, I was trying pretty hard to make the final sales. And uh, I think it was this turn of events from being a struggling golfer on, on, the, on the tour um, to a sales rookie uh, in the equipment business um, that gave me some of the skills that I need to make the next step. So. I learned that day uh, the thin line between success and utter disaster, the way that kind of one error in my step to become uh, this, and one desperate recovery uh, could change everything. So uh, I certainly found ways to learn from my losses um, and there. Um, I think competing against the best is, is also something that's been, been said today by a few of the different speakers. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of always looking to compete against the best of the best. Um, I think I personally always perform to a greater potential when I know that the competition is good. Um, and it certainly gets my energy level up and increases uh, my hunger to win over the many competitors that are flooding into, into our industry um, here in the Philippines. Um, and in, on, back, to, back to sporting, as you can see, I, uh, my coaches always put me up against better teams because that made us that made us better um, and prepared us for the long term mentally and physically. Um, so uh, talk about getting beat. This is uh, me here with Rich, Rich Flying, Richard Franklin who happens to be the world champion in mixed martial arts. So I didn't put a picture of me lying face down on the mat after this uh, interaction, but uh, he, uh, he certainly um, beat the heck out of me. Um, So, I've, I've talked a bit already about three losses to wins, competing against the best, um, you know, at, at AIG here in the Philippines, um, it, it's, it's, it's an uphill battle, but I still remember my first win uh, vividly against the best, and uh, there was a time when I was tasked with actually ensuring uh, Sony Pictures Entertainment, and Sony uh, is, is a big movie production house that films movies all over the world. And uh, I was, uh, at the time, tasked with ensuring the James Bond films productions. And uh, it happened to be Casino Royale at the time in, uh, in, in the UK. And uh, this was a big client and an important one for, for us. It was one that uh, just about everybody was going after at the time. Uh, and you can only imagine the challenge in ensuring uh, James Bond. <laughs> So it took an understanding about the company and exposures and certainly the geographies, uh, the wealth of geographies that Sony was operating in uh, to get the deal done. Uh, competition doesn't just create winners and success stories. I think it builds strong personalities, resilience, and determination. Uh, so my realization after uh, all this was you make plans, you try hard, you fail, you recover, and then you get lucky. My second uh, 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 bright light of success is go global. Um, this is again the importance of conducting uh, business uh, globally and thinking broadly, uh, as well as having a strong curiosity for the world around you. I know, um, and I understand not all of us in the room here um, uh, deal with customers outside of the Philippines, um, but I think this will eventually change. And you've heard from some of the speakers already that are opening companies outside of, of the Philippines and expanding their businesses. Um, so, you know, I think this is an, an, a, a, a key uh, area that we need to focus on. Um, for me personally, at, at AIG, I deal with, with global clients on a, on a fairly regular basis. And uh, this is certainly not what you want to hear from one of them when somebody come, calls you and says, Scott, if you can't handle my business worldwide, then we have to look for other providers. Uh, and that's a scary one uh, for me to hear, and um, and that's exactly what I've heard. Um, and to give you an example, uh, we were working with a large construction company that had operations outside of the Philippines, and they were 
were expanding other parts of Asia and the Middle East, and uh, you know they needed to to needed to show evidence of insurance wherever they were operating, and, and pretty much you had uh, to do it quickly or else uh, they were stuck with exorbitant fines. So it was pretty important. Um, so they called me and said, Scott, you have six months uh, to coordinate your company's resources um, and make sure that we get proper coverage and services. And if you can't do it, we love you, uh, Scott, but you're out. Um, and it was that time I realized you need to know the markets um, your customers are in. You have to have a game plan uh, for coordinating with companies outside of your host country. Um, and this leads me to uh, having a global mindset, which is needed in order uh, to be capable of uh, different environments. Um, are all of us in the room here prepared for, for ASEAN integration? Um, to me, having a global, global mindset is, is really three key elements. First, you need to have intellectual capital and be global business savvy and have a cosmopolitan outlook. Um, this can actually be checked, this box can be checked very quickly by picking up a, uh, an international affairs magazine or a paper understanding what's going on around the world. Um, second is psychological capital and having the passion for diversity and the thirst for adventure. Uh, I think there's some pictures up here. Uh, you know, personally, I love to, to travel and seek out new cultures and environments um, all around the world. Um, and, and I think that's my uh, thirst for adventure. And finally, social capital, and that's the, uh, the interpersonal aspect and the diplomacy. Um, I think this is very important in a place like the Philippines um, where uh, the personal relationship aspect uh, of our business is so strong. Um, so uh, that's Go Global or, uh, or, or Go Home. Um, speaking of global, here we are um, in the Philippines today as AIG Insurance. Um, as a global company with roots firmly planted in the Philippines. Um, AIG has been here since, uh, since the, the 40s, um, and we're here supporting uh, many uh, Philippine businesses that are uh, both starting up and uh, fully fledged as well. Um, in the Philippines, uh, we have our multinational uh, division as well, which is an interesting um, business to, for, for me to look at because it's amazing to see how many companies are coming into the Philippines and starting up, um, both small, medium, and large. Uh, in fact, one of our big multinational clients is the Marriott Hotel, so um, as you're walking around, please don't slip on any uh, wet floors and, uh, and, and so we encounter any losses, uh, but it's an important part of our business as well. Risky business. Okay, so this is about kicking risk in the face and saying, really bring it on. I think it was a, uh, a Mario Andretti, a race car driver, that said, if things seem under control, you just aren't going fast enough. Um, so, um, as you know, I'm in the world of taking risk, and uh, if you want to take a stab at what uh, Typhoon Yolanda caused the insurance industry, I've got a prize for you later, but it caused about um, 700 million in insurance related losses. So um, you may ask Scott, well, shoot, how do you sleep well at night knowing that you know you could encounter some pretty big, big losses? Um, and it's, it, it's certainly important to take calculated risk, but to look at those risks head on. Um, so on a daily basis, somebody can come, be coming to me with a potential event that would cause um, harm and, uh, and put their business in jeopardy. I think we all know about the, 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 the the, the regular ones from the Philippines, your earthquake, your wind, and your flood, which is which is certainly a, a big focus. But what about um, some of the unique risks that are rapidly growing in the Philippines um, and that we're encountering um, as uh, the economy continues to get more sophisticated and evolve as quickly as it is? Um, you know, a family that needs uh, kidnapping exposure, for example, or BPOs that see cyber risk and hacking as a major exposure uh, in the Philippines. Or what about, as I just found out yesterday, what if somebody wants to ensure the Manny Pacquiao match uh, for event cancellation so that if it goes out in the eighth round and 95 million Filipinos can't watch the end of the fight, what's going to happen? This is risky business. So again, there's some very unique risks um, to, 
to pay attention to. Um, so I, I encourage us all to look at calculated risk uh, seriously, but there are great unforeseen um, opportunities that can come uh, from risk taking. And uh, here I am in the Philippines uh, at, at the moment uh, after taking a risk uh, and, and leaving uh, New York to come over here. Um, and I think I'm, the experience that I'm getting in the Philippines um, is, is second to none. Um, and I hang my hat on the fact that the Philippines is a country that will continue uh, to become more and more resilient, building a better community's infrastructure and, and businesses over the long term. I think taking risk also shows confidence. I think that's important in, in our business. Um, I know that uh, you know, trusted employers, certainly like AIG, um, want to see others that show confidence, and, uh, and that's a big, big point um, to, to take on. My final uh, success or bright light of success uh, here in the Philippines, and that's fun, is serious business. Um, so again, skim over these pictures quickly, but uh, you know, I am a firm believer that a business has to be involving, it has to be fun, and it has to exercise uh, your creative instincts. And uh, hopefully some of these pictures illustrate how fun it can be in insurance, but uh, I'm sure you can translate some of these into your business as well. But, uh, you know, one example, when I first started with AIG Japan, was a, a, a client that I had in the pesticide business. And uh, this was a tough client to, uh, to, to, to make happy. And even uh, no matter what we did, it seemed like he always thought insurance was the bane of his existence. So um, one, of the, one of the things I did was set up a, uh, a, a introduction to him to 12 sumo wrestlers that were coming in from, uh, from around the world uh, to, uh, to do an exhibition in Madison Square Garden. And you can imagine uh, the eyes lighting up of this Japanese client when he found out he was going to see a sumo rant match in, uh, in New York. But, uh, you know, in my business, I'm always uh, taking a shot at making the business fun for our employees and our clients. Um, I think it builds a better uh, and stronger and certainly longer term uh, relationship. Um, the happier your employees are, the better they're going to treat your customers. And, um, I think the fund certainly allows all of the employees to be um, creative. Uh, so here are some, some, some uh, examples of fun here in the Philippines. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we tend to transport our, our, some of our larger clients around in a jeepney instead of a car, just to show uh, the, uh, some of the Philippine history. Uh, two years ago, AIG sponsored the New Zealand All Blacks uh, as a uh, the rugby team. And uh, we certainly had fun utilizing that sponsorship uh, in the Philippines um, to get employee engagement um, around uh, the supporting team. Um, the Innovation Awards, and then uh, that's not the lead singer of ACDC on the bottom right, that's me uh, presenting at the, uh, the Travel uh, Awards night um, where we did a Rock of Ages uh, theme. So, uh, I think every AIG employee has a very strong understanding of what it means to be working for a global company. And uh, together, uh, we all achieve uh, more. And I'd say that uh, in conclusion, I would hope that we all work on uh, turning our losses into wins. Um, and that we can all work um, and to continue to become more worldly uh, and not to shy away from taking calculated uh, risk and, uh, and certainly thinking creativity uh, when it comes to bringing fun to your teams and customers. Um, so here's the leadership team of, of AIG Philippines um, and I suppose uh, leadership at one time might have meant flexing your muscles but uh, today it means getting along with people and, uh, and fun the Filipino way can certainly help. So thank you very much ladies and gentlemen.